man and what? A short dvar Torah for Parashat Bereshit. Every year, thousands of teaching hours are spent across the country to teach the children of Israel that the lion's mate is a lioness, that a male cow is a bull, and that the rooster and chicken are an item. This might not be true for all animals. For example, I don't know what the tadpole's father is called, or maybe it's its mother I'm not sure about. But if we were to ignore the differences in the names of the species, all these teaching hours would go to waste, not to mention the millions of puzzles and books children will no longer know what to do with. It is therefore clear that the names of animals of different genders are extremely important. This is why, to avoid the unpleasantness that may arise from mistakes in a subject in which so many millions have been invested, I chose to contribute to the cause and discover what to call a female human. To prove the relevance of this question, I suggest checking the verses in the second story of creation of man that appears in Bereshit Perek Bet. In Pasuk Zayn, God creates man dust from the ground and blows into his nostrils the breath of life. He is put into Gan Eden and God decides that it is not good for man to be alone, I will create him an aid to stand by him. Here, of course, God reveals to us who the helper is going to be. And we discover to our joy that the human female that God brings is every beast of the field and every bird of the sky. Alternatively, we might have been mistaken and those animals and birds are the children of man because the verse describes how God created them from the earth and brings them to man so that he can call them by name. According to this reading, man's original partner is earth, or at least the animals that came out of it, or something like that, or I'm I'm not sure. Only after this interesting experience with the animals, after man names the beasts, birds, and animals, and does not find a suitable partner among them, God puts man to sleep and takes one of his sides, builds a woman out of it, and brings her to man, who, without getting confused, gets confused twice. First, man, who was previously been asked to name the animals brought to him, understands that he's expected to give names again, and gives the woman a name. Secondly, the name man gives woman is unclear. The explanation, this is a bone from my bones and flesh of my flesh, this shall be called Isha, because she was taken from Ish, doesn't fit with what we know. Up until now, man has always been called Adam. If man wants to tell us that he has found his mate and that the reason she's suitable for him was because she was created from from him, he should have called her Adama or Ademet if he felt the name was already taken. When did he become Ish to call her Isha? This is why, in my opinion, something much more fundamental is happening in this story. God's declaration, I shall create for him an aid to stand by him, is a demand from man to decide who he is. If he is Adam, created from the Adama, it's natural that his aid will also be of the animals of the field and the birds of the sky. Therefore, God brings them to him. Such a choice would have created an instinctive and impulsive person. Every choice he would make from now on would be based on two questions. What will I enjoy more? And what is imprinted in my DNA that would encourage survival? This doesn't work. Man doesn't find his aid. He isn't interested in an animalistic life that only satisfies his physical needs. He's looking for something else, something he doesn't recognize, something that requires divine mediation. When God creates an Isha from him, a creation separate from the earth, his animalistic side, this partner represents the connection to his divine side. It symbolizes his ability to choose based on thought and morality instead of instincts, using God's image from within. This ability is expressed in the name he gives her. She is an Isha because she is the partner of an Ish, not Adam. About her, the sages say, and not both of them without Shechina, Velosh Nehem Lelo Shechina. He brings to this connection the letter Yud from God's name and she the He. This also explains the tragedy that takes place in Gan Eden. When God asks Adam, who told you that you are naked? Man's immediate response is, the woman whom you've given to me. She gave me from the tree and I have eaten. Rashi explained that he's being an ingrate, but he may be explaining why he listened to her. After all, she is the woman who you have given with me. She is my way to do what you want, my moral compass. What did you want me to do, ignore her? 
In the verses discussing the results, uh, PC for punishment, we discover that indeed God does not want him to listen to an external conscious. Man is not Pinocchio with Jiminy Cricket telling him what is moral and what is not, relieving him of the need to think and choose morally. He cannot shed responsibility for his mistakes and blame women. He must think and choose for himself. Not only is she a woman because she was created from a man, he must also be a man because woman was created from him. If you enjoyed this video and want to see other ones like it, why don't you subscribe or maybe share it with a friend, they might enjoy it as well. Alternatively, you might want to check out my book in the link below, Echad Shohev Tanach. Whatever you choose, I am Dovi Holtz, one who loves his wife and Tanach.